Truth and Tea with the Urban Evangelist. Welcome to Truth and Tea with the Urban Evangelist. Hi there, welcome back to Truth and Tea, the podcast that filters life through faith. I am the Urban Evangelist and today we are looking at mental health, in particular some of the healing tools that are available in reference to psychotherapy. And joining me today is a very special guest who's very well versed in this topic. His name is Pastor Samson Bonoba. Welcome to Truth and Tea. Thank you very much. He is the founder of Legacy Family Counseling and Therapy Center right here in Lusaka. So glad you could make time for us today. Thank you so much. Thank and you. It's a, it's a privilege to be on uh, with uh, Urban Evangelist ah, and bless. Truth and Tea as well. <laughs> Making me blush hard already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so without much ado, Pastor Samson, um, already just in the name of your center, you know, um, there's a distinction between the counseling and the therapy. So, I mean, are these two mutually ex exclusive or can we use them interchange interchangeably? Are they one and the same thing? Or there really is a clear distinction between counseling, uh, therapy, or even psychotherapy? Yeah, thank you so much for the question. Um, first of all, they are used interchangeably. Mm -hmm. And that is because of the different ways they are uh, applied. But uh, if we want to draw a fine line, we can say that counseling is um, uh, a kind of um, approach to healing or to treat someone's issues or facing conflict. But whereas counseling and therapy can be used interchangeably, therapy goes beyond just helping one person mm -hmm. and helping and in, trying to solve uh, an immediate problem. Mm -hmm. um, therapy goes beyond that. And that's why we have many modalities of therapy, mm. um, many modalities and uh, approaches to counseling. But you can use them interchangeably. All right. Yes. And what then would be psychotherapy? So psychotherapy, from the very term psychotherapy, um, uh, people who have heard of psychology mm. or uh, psychiatry or psych. Uh, it comes from understanding how the mind works, mm -hmm. how your soul works, how your emotions work. So psychotherapy then is helping the person um, address issues mm. that they are going through in their mind or in their emotions mm. or in their feelings. So that's where we make a distinction. So yeah. what we like to refer to then as therapy, you know, in relation to mental health, really is psychotherapy that we are highlighting based on your definition, right? Yes. Okay. And seeing that, you know, mental health is such um, a big phenomenon now, like there's more and more people talking about it, I thought to bring the conversation into Christian circles because there seems to be, you know, um, some stigma attached to seeking therapy especially. Counseling, we seem to be you know, a bit more welcoming to it, maybe because it involves sitting down and talking. But when we add a bit more clinical terms to it, um, we get very touchy about the topic. Why do you think this is so? Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, you remember we have said they can be used interchangeably. So counseling is a term that we are using as recent as maybe 50 years or 60 mm. years simply because we don't want to hear of psychology or someone has a problem with their psych. And so trauma, a bit of trauma is attached to that or, or um, a bit of misunderstanding is attached to that because who, who would like to be termed that, you know, that one has a problem with their psych, mm. has a problem with their mind. Um, uh, and, and that's why if someone, if I came to you because I need some psychotherapy, mm -hmm then my friends will be saying that I think he has a problem with his mind. But no one ever goes to ask, why did you go to the doctor because you had a flu? Um, why? Exactly. Yeah, no, one, no one has a, an issue with that. Right. You, you had an issue with the stomach, you went to the doctor. Yeah. But with the mind, somehow we seem to think that um, our minds are okay. All of us mm. are in control, are in charge. But... Um, 
I think word everyone knows, everyone watching knows that um, your mind can have an issue. You may be stuck in your mind. You may have no clue about what to do. Mm. So you need some guidance. Um, we, we have what we call career counseling. We have what we call marriage counseling. Right. We have what we call um, family counseling. Yeah. Um, it just simply means that you are trying to get some guidance with your mind, with making a decision, with um, uh, resolving a conflict that you're having in your mind, in your feelings, you're trying to resolve it. And there's no problem with it. But um, one last point I can make about that is because some people have abused uh, that approach mm. to healing or that approach to treatment mm -hmm. because when they come to you there everybody will start stigmatizing you and saying oh those people are, have a problem my insa has a problem because she, she's always seeing a therapist um, and so just to see, add to that where yeah. do emotions come in because i mean there's a lot of the mind that's been highlighted mm -hmm. but aren't emotions also part of the package when you seek therapy Definitely, definitely, because um, in, in psychotherapy we have what we call uh, your mind, your emotions, yep. your feelings, and how they affect your behavior. Yep. So if you think that running in the morning is good, then you start running in the morning. If you think that eating vegetables is good, you start eating vegetables. Mm. So how you feel about that, mm -hmm. where your emotions come in, is what determines how you behave. Okay. So in, in, we have many modalities in psychotherapy where we uh, help people start to think and feel good about themselves and then they will change their behavior. So it's a belief system, <clears throat> yes, excuse me, definitely. even like when it comes to the actual stigma itself. Um, based on what I'm hearing from you, is the stigma attached to psychotherapy or the stigma is attached to mental well-being? because it mm. seems like people really have an issue with, like you said, being labeled as mentally unstable. Mm. So could that be where the real work is in actually getting people to understand that it's not someone who is mentally unstable that needs to seek therapy? Where do we break the stigma that is attached and associated to just seeking mental well-being, really? I mean. We diet so our bodies can look good, you know, we exercise so we can be in shape and good form. Why is it such an issue when it comes to the mind? Um, I'm, I'm happy that you mentioned belief system because what you believe, again, also affects how you behave. So we have believed for a long time that um, we don't need help in the mind. And because of that, when we seek help for with the mind, we are told you have something, prob we have a problem with it, you have a problem, there's something wrong with you. However, uh, I would say that just like we have medical doctors go for training and we have um, uh, pediatricians going for training, we also need training in understanding how the mind works. So sometimes people have gone for help and then they are not helped well. Mm -hmm. They are just abused. Or I could say they become worse. So we hear many people saying that I went for therapy but I wasn't helped. So you keep going for further help. You seek, sometimes you even given the wrong uh, therapy, if I may put it that way. So I would say that the stigma is really attached to wrong therapy and also a misunderstanding of what does it mean to be well. And, and just to park there, like when we say someone is given the wrong therapy, um, I'm, I'm assuming obviously these are not physical therapies, like it's not, mm. um, for instance, an operation that's taking place on the mind, of course, to see yeah. what's going on on the inside. But could it be, again, wrong therapy in that um, it doesn't align with your belief system, like what the therapy is asking you to do? Uh, for instance, maybe 
I see a, a new age therapist who tells me just maybe meditate or do yoga. Could that be what you mean? Yes, that's, what, that's part of the problem. Okay. Uh, because uh, let's say that we don't believe that the mind has a problem. But we all agree that at one point or another, you get stuck in what you should do. So if you went to a therapist who believes that you have a problem, yeah. and then for you, you don't believe you have a problem, yeah. they will either not give you the right therapy or they will misdirect you. And for example, we have issues like um, depression, mm. anxiety, stress. Mm -hmm. Recently, uh, I just used a tool uh, we call stress management mm -hmm. on um, uh, some people. And they all discover that they are not managing their stress very well. But these are people who are highly placed right. and uh, they, are, they, they didn't know what their problem was. They thought yeah. they were so anxious, or they were depressed, but then just by answering a few questions, about 10, 12 questions on managing stress, mm. just stress. So that, that brings me to the point that if they thought they were depressed, and then you gave them uh, treatment for depression, mm -hmm. then you are not helping them. By giving them treatment for depression? Yes, because they just thought, you just believe that you are depressed. So when you go to the doctor with a headache, yeah. migraine, they will tell you, oh, have you been sleeping? Right. When I did see. it start? Okay. They'll start okay. asking you questions. Right. And through that interview, yeah. through that diagnosis and interview and some tests, they take your blood pressure, yeah. they take everything, they are able to tell, okay, you know what? Your yeah. headache is coming because you have a problem with, uh, with your sleep. You have not been sleeping. Mm. So go and sleep. So there is a cause effect kind of equation here. Exactly. So it means that um, when the mind is unwell, there's a bit more behind it. Yes. And what are some of the most common triggers that you come across when it comes to, you know, um, just not being okay? Yes, so the, there is a phenomenon we call nature versus nature. Mm -hmm. So some people believe, and, and there is merit to it, uh, that because you have stress, probably it's because of your families or your parents, or because you have depression, it's in your genes. So they believe that you are biologically susceptible to be stressed. Okay? That's okay. one thing. Okay. Um, and there is merit. There are some th tests you can do to prove that, okay, this is something, a condition that you are likely to face. So we'll see how we manage it. However, there's also the environment, how you nurture, uh, where you're nurtured and where you're developing from, your social environment. Mm. That could be a cause. You are working hard, working long hours, um, you, you don't have enough exercise, you have teenagers in the, in the, in the house, I have teenagers. <laughs> so there's all, all these things that could bring stress or right. bring depression okay. or cause you anxiety. So when, when you approach a counselor or a psychotherapist or therapist, they will ask you, they should be able to help you understand mm. what could be surrounding your mm. issue now. What, why are you stuck? You're going to sit exams. Probably you didn't prepare well. Probably you are so anxious because you failed the last exam. So there's that aspect of it because it doesn't happen from anywhere. It just doesn't happen that, okay, now I'm stressed. Okay, then you go and take some medication. No, we should understand, be able to understand. That's why it is psychotherapy. Mm. Uh, we talk through it. We speak about it, go through your emotions, go through your feelings. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Why are you thinking like that? We go through the belief system. We are, that whole process is what is termed therapy because you are trying to explore the whole person. Is it because they have just recently got married and they're anxious about 
um, having a child because the parents are asking for the child, and what is their belief yeah. or what are their values. We talk through all of that. So the more and more um, I listen in, I get the sense that the foundation of therapy really is also the belief system. And perhaps that's where there would be the biggest departure when it comes to Christians, especially struggling, you know, um, to seek psychotherapy because we are taught, you know, from very early on, just probably even at conversion, read your Bible, pray every day, you'll grow, talk to God, talk to Jesus, you've got the Holy Spirit. Why isn't that alone, you know, um, enough? Why is counseling or therapy um, a tool that can actually be used alongside with everything else, you know, to just arrive at wholeness and, and well-being? So, uh, thank you for that question. First and foremost, uh, let's say you, what's the first thing about you? If I may ask. About me? Yes. In what sense? I mean, first and foremost, who are you? I'm Mayinza. You're Mayinza. Mm -hmm. But you are a woman. Yes. So when you became a Christian, does it change you being a woman? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, did your mind change because you became a Christian? Yes. Okay, how did it change? Uh, I was renewed. Um, my belief system changed yes. and my transformation came as a result of changing my belief system. So right there is what therapy and what counseling and what psychotherapy is doing. That when you become a Christian, you don't change you being a woman, mm -hmm. but your mind needs to change. Mm -hmm. and. Um, my, my, my theory is that uh, counseling is a process. It is a process, and in Christian terms, we can call it a discipleship process okay. or an evangelistic process. Because you hear something, and then you start thinking about it, and then you believe it. Then you start changing. So sometimes the problem we get is that when we become Christians, we forget that we need to go through that process. Because not everything disappears and now everything is, you're, you're thinking right, you're believing right, your body will change, and then tomorrow you are on the right track. Even Christians get stuck, mm -hmm. which means they need some therapy, yeah. they need some counseling, they need some discipleship. That's why the words are used interchangeably. Because when you go to a therapist, they will discuss with you, they will talk with you and explore solutions to why you are stuck. And at the end of the day, you're like, oh, I didn't know I could try this. I didn't know that this was right. This was something that I was doing it wrong. So therapy, anybody, I mean, we always say every counselor needs a counselor, mm -hmm. every therapist mm -hmm. needs a therapist. Okay. So in, in your experience, since this is your line of work and expertise, you're saying that um, there's ways that when a person is stuck, you know, they can be helped. What does that process look like? Um, I mean, what are some of the recommendations that come with that? Um, I think I asked this question because there's probably few people that I've seen, you know, the four corners of a room with a therapist and there are those that, you know, um, have not. There's, 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 there's people that would shy away from, 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 from that setup. So I'm trying to bring some flies on the wall here to yes, see yeah. what that really does look like. Um, you, you have a session. Is it tools that you equip a person with? You know, do you delve into the past? Because I know some people, <clears throat> I don't know why this keeps happening, that just don't want to revisit their past. You know, they've locked up their past, they've thrown away the key and they don't want to look back. Yeah. So what would like a typical session of just trying to get someone help look like? Before we go to the session, <laughs> you mentioned something about a belief system or a theory behind the psychotherapy process. Mm -hmm. 
So every, I wanted to put this out of, off the table first. Every therapy method has a theory behind. Okay, okay. Every uh, practicing therapist or psychotherapist or counselor has a theory. Um, and I would mention just three. One, there is a theory that believes, or a theory that, that is based on the thinking that your past is the one that affects your now, okay? What does that mean? If I can help you understand your past, then mm -hmm. you'll be able to make some changes mm -hmm and say, okay, I don't want to go to my past. Now I understand it's because my parents, my grandparents, my uncles, my aunties, so, and because I had a trauma effect in my, in, uh, an abuse in my past, that's why I'm behaving like this. So I help you understand your behavior based on what you have gone through, okay? Okay. Now, if you are practicing like that, then I'll be asking you questions. Tell me about your childhood. Tell me about um, your, upbringing, tell me about your environment at home. That's the conversation. Yeah. And when you tell me that, then I'll help you understand that, you see, this is connected. You're feeling like this because you went through this. That's one theory. It has its merits. And um, the second one that I would bring out is the one that is based on your thinking shapes your behavior. Your belief system shapes your behavior. So if I can help you put off your wrong thinking or yeah. your wrong beliefs right. and put on new ones, then you, you'll change your situation. So that's another session, another kind of theory. The third one helps you understand the conflicting thoughts that you're having in your mind. So we talk about how do you feel about this that you have told me? How do you feel about your relationship with your children? How do you feel about your relationship with your boss? Yeah. So the theory behind is that um, there are things you might not be able to change, but if I can help you change how you feel mm -hmm. and take responsibility mm -hmm. of your feelings, then you'll feel better, you'll get a solution. I've mentioned these three, just three of them, there are thousands of modalities. Yeah. But I've mentioned these three uh, to, one of them is called the, um, psychodynamic theory, and for those who like to get some information, <laughs> others think um, uh, about cognitive behavior therapy, and uh, another one is um, experiential therapy. Um, but I've mentioned them to highlight the fact that an experienced and trained therapist will be able to integrate okay. the different All theories. Right. Okay. Um, the more you practice, in, in my practice, I can pick on any yeah. tool from anywhere. Okay. It, it, I don't have to use one. Because sometimes you may come, the one that I've not mentioned intentionally is the medical one or the biological model. Mm -hmm. uh, the biological model is based on the assumption that your brain has chemicals and hormones and mm -hmm. enzymes which need to be balanced. Okay, that sounds technical already. Yes, so sometimes <laughs> the, the, the challenge, you, you know, um, you have had, uh, when, when you're having a pain, they give you something to, uh, a sedative. Why? Because they want you to sleep so that the body heals itself. Mm. That is the theory. It's not, it's not the painkiller that heals you, no. The painkiller just makes your body rest. So it's the rest and effect. Yes, yeah. it, it gives you rest so that by the time you wake up, the body has been able to reconstruct mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So the, the biological model uh, deals with the brain. And, and we have really studied about the brain. There are, there are neurosurgeons and all that. But sometimes we forget that the brain also needs help. When, when do you go to the hospital to just check on your brain and how it's functioning? There are chemicals, there are circuits in the brain, if you looked at the brain. I'm sure some people are imagining the brain. Yeah. So um, if I realize that, you know, the issues you're presenting need another expert, another person to look at it, then I'll refer you. 
If I realize that you just need to go to the general practitioner, I'll refer you, say, you know what, you need to visit. When did you last visit your doctor? Yeah. Just go to your doctor. Yeah. When, did last, when did you last go to church? When did you last go for your meetings? Maybe I realize that that is what will help you. So this, the sessions are really just exploring what I, what is your environment like? Yeah. What is your past like? What are the other solutions that you might explore that may help you? I don't know whether that helps. It does. So um, your centre, what are some of the services that you offer? And is it a faith-based counselling centre? Yes. Okay. It's faith-based, Bible-based, Christian-based. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we do counselling, we do psychotherapy, we do teaching. Um, we, 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 we train in a lot of these uh, different modalities. Uh, Right now, there's a course that we are doing in grief, grief counseling course. Mm -hmm. And many of the students who come in for that course actually find themselves getting healed and recovering through the course. Yeah. Um, and, and simply because they get exposed to the, to the modalities of the grief uh, counseling. Um, there's another one that we do intentionally. We try to talk about um, different the different modalities and see how the scriptures bring them out because uh, all psychology is in the, in the Bible <laughs> and psych is just an issue of the mind like we have said and psychology is the study of how the mind works mm. and how we work through it. So those are things we, we do briefly and of course we do a little bit of coaching. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, I know you didn't mention coaching but these are terms we keep interchanging. Coaching, mentoring, parenting, counseling. <laughs> a parent is supposed to be counseling their children yeah. because they are growing up in their family. Now, oftentimes, if the parent is not doing well at discipling and bringing up their children, mm. the children go and seek counsel. Mm. Elsewhere. Yes, if the church has not discipled the people well or there's a gap somewhere, they go and look for therapy somewhere. So in conclusion, are we saying that while it is advisable to seek therapy and counseling, mm -hmm. Christians should seek Christian uh, or faith-based counseling yes. in a nutshell? Yes. Okay, and then who then is an ideal candidate for counseling? I thought you were going to ask for who is the ideal <laughs> candidate to do the counseling. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, so any person. Well, you could answer both, actually. Yes, any right. person. Right, it's, it's um, double-edged. Just like you go and have a, doc, a medical check, you should have regular check with mm. either a counsellor mm -hmm. uh, or somebody who is experienced, skilled, trained, who understands. I mean, uh, culturally speaking, we usually go to the elders. Yeah. Why do we go to them? Because they have seen a lot of enough corners and they're able to tell you my young man young lady don't do that this is how you do it and because they know where you're going so any person um, I would advise every month just check on somebody who you think can give you some counsel mm. or someone who can guide you um, don't wait until the tooth is bad to go to the doctor right so uh, don't wait until you have really an obsess. Just keep regular check with your doctor. So even for counseling and psychotherapy, have someone. That's why we call, we have what we call Z support groups. Yes. We have um, those regular meetings because they are therapeutic, if I may put it that way. If you meet with people who you can laugh with, you can joke with, mm -hmm. You can challenge each other, you can encourage each other. Yeah. That is therapy in itself. So if you're not, if you spend one day, you, you have heard of what they call isolation. You know, you isolate yourself, the next thing you feel depressed. Yeah. The next thing you get anxious. The next yeah. thing we hear that, oh, we don't know what happened to him or her. So, so I've given you the, the, the side of any person. Anyway, don't isolate yourself. 
go see somebody or see a group of people. Mm. That's one. Now, who should do the counseling? They should be trained. They should be skilled. Exactly. Yeah, because you don't just go to any doctor. Yeah. You don't just go to any... You, you hear that, oh, there's someone there, they can mix some, some herbs, they can mix... No, you, you first find out that that person is actually qualified. They can do the job. They can do the yeah. job. They, can, <laughs> they know how to do the diagnosis. Yeah. They can prescribe, yeah. So people who are trained, people who are skilled. I, I know in Christian circles, some people can be passionate, but not trained. So I would rather have both. Be passionate and also and be, trained. And be trained. Yes. Okay, all right. No, it's been an insightful discussion. Um, Thank you yeah, so much. pun intended, insightful. <laughs> Got a sneak peek into what really goes on in the mind. And um, I hope that as you have watched this, as you're listening in, you've definitely picked up a thing or two. So, Pastor Samson, thank you so much for thank coming so much. on to Truth and Tea. And hopefully we can see a few more, you know, of our own folk begin to reach out to some of these healing tools that are available and, you know, are within the confines of the Bible, of course. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, God intends for us to prosper mentally, spiritually, emotionally, mm -hmm. and physically as well. Not so. Yes, yes. <laughs> Holistic. Holistic, yes. exactly. Yes. All right. Any last words? No, uh, I think you've said much of it. <laughs> Just that uh, um, any person, whichever age, whichever stage in life they are, go seek counsel, go seek therapy. Don't wait until uh, you're at your worst. Uh, it is, it, is, it is better you prevent the situation than you wait for the cure. I think that's what I could um, uh, recommend and encourage as a last word, that it is not an issue of now you're at your worst, then we just carry you on the, actually force you to go for help. Yes, that's my last word. Thank you so much. It's been Truth and Tea. Do catch it on Radio Christian Voice every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And also look out for it on YouTube channels, Christian Voice, Radio Christian Voice and The Urban Evangelist. Have a blessed week ahead.